We can think of a menu button in two general ways, what it looks like and what it does. Here we'll concentrate on the first and discuss the techniques for making your buttons look the way you want them to look. Click the Buttons tab in the window docking area to bring the button window to the front. As you can see in this window, buttons can have a wide variety of shapes and looks. In fact, the possibilities are infinite since, as we'll discuss, you can create custom artwork and apply it to your buttons in several ways. In the Buttons window, point your mouse to the fourth button in the top row. Drag this button onto your workspace and add it to your menu. Then add a thumbnail image to the button. Your button can contain text, an image, or both. The particular button that we chose from the button window uses just the image portion. If you want this button to have a text component along with the image, right-click the button in the workspace and choose Button Style, Text, and Image from the menu. This makes the text visible and you can see that it sits right over the image. Click the Sizing Tool button and click away from the button to deselect it. Then click the text to select just that portion of the button and move it to where you want it. Of course, type the text you want in the button and specify the text attributes like font, size, color, and so on. Now that we see what the finished button looks like, let's tear it apart and rebuild it in order to look at the individual pieces. With the sizing tool still selected, click the image portion of the button to select just that portion. Why does the button artwork look round even though the button itself is clearly rectangular? To find the answer, click the Media tab in the Properties window which, since you've selected a button, currently shows button properties. You can see in the Media tab that, as we already saw, the button has two main components, text and image, and you can use the button style property as another way to specify which component or components you want to use. The image portion of the button can be further broken down into two main categories, thumbnail properties and frame properties. It's these properties that enable you to dictate the button's appearance. Point to the value for the thumbnail media property. A tooltip appears and shows you the name of the button artwork file and the file path to that file on your computer drives. This is the image that you added as a thumbnail earlier. Make note of the location so you can find it again later. Click the thumbnail media text box, then click the drop down arrow and choose remove from the menu. The button on your menu now contains no thumbnail artwork. Now click the Mask text box under the Thumbnail Properties and then click the drop down arrow and choose Media Properties from the menu. In the Media Properties dialog box, the File Name field shows you the name and file path of the mask artwork. In this case, since the artwork comes from one of the included themes, you find it in the folder for that theme. Make note of this location and click OK. Then, remove the mask artwork from the Thumbnail Properties section. In the same way, remove the artwork from the Frame Media and the Mask Properties under the Frame Properties section. Now the image portion of your button is empty. Let's put it all back together to see how all of the pieces that you just removed interact to give the button its appearance. First, click the Thumbnail Media text box, click the drop down arrow and choose Replace from the menu. In the Open Media dialog box, navigate back to the image you want as the thumbnail and click Open. Now let's talk about the thumbnail mask. In Windows, navigate to the artwork file that you noted to be used for the button mask and preview it. The thumbnail mask gives the button its shape because it limits the portion of the thumbnail image that will be visible. You can use many different file formats as your mask artwork. If you use a format that supports transparency like PNG or PSD, Anything in the artwork that you make transparent will allow the thumbnail image to show through. When your file does not have transparent areas, any area of the artwork that has a red value of 255 will be treated as if it were transparent and allow the thumbnail to show through. Anything that is not seen as transparent will block the thumbnail from view. In the computer video world, you combine each of three colors, red, green, and blue, at their maximum values to create white. That maximum value is 255. Thus, the white area in the mask contains a red value of 255, and as we just learned, any area with a red value of 255 lets the thumbnail image show through. The color black has a red value of 0, so it will block the thumbnail image. Add the mask artwork back to the mask property under the thumbnail properties section. You now have a round button thumbnail image. 
Next, recall that the final button artwork includes an animated frame. In Windows, select and preview the file that you noted earlier was used as the button frame. Now use the Frame Media property to add the frame artwork back to your button. Obviously, this causes us a problem. The frame artwork obscures the button's thumbnail artwork. This is where the frame mask artwork comes in. In Windows, navigate to and preview the frame mask file. The white portion of this file allows the frame artwork to show through, while the black portion blocks the frame artwork. Let's add that artwork back to the button's frame properties mask property to finish off the button's appearance. Remember that we used an animated GIF file for the frame artwork on this button. In order to see this animation when you preview your menu, set the frame properties style property to animated. If you want the animation to start on something other than the first frame, specify a different frame in the start time property. Now preview your menu and you can see the button frame animation. Notice that if you had used an animated file format, including a video file, for your thumbnail image, you could set that artwork to animate and specify a different start time in the same way. So now you know how to construct a custom button that looks exactly like you want it to look. One more aspect of a button's appearance involves the button highlight that appears when your viewer selects it on the menu. With the button still selected, click the Highlight tab in the Button Properties window. DVD Architect uses Rectangle as the default highlight style, as you can see in the Style property. But there are several other options. The Rectangle settings, Rectangle, Text Rectangle, and Image Rectangle, cause the entire rectangular area of the button, including both the graphic and text portions if you've used both, to become highlighted regardless of the button shape you've created with the artwork files we talked about. Preview your menu to see this. Close the Preview window. The Mask Overlay settings, Mask Overlay, Text Overlay, and Image Overlay, create highlights over just the text and or image shape that you've created. Change to one of the Mask Overlay settings and preview your menu again to see the results. The Underline setting creates a highlight that underlines the length of the button rectangle, including text and image portions, regardless of the image shape you've created with the artwork that makes up your button's appearance. But the real interesting option is Custom. Choose Custom from the Style Property drop-down list. Then set the Mask property to use the artwork you want as your custom highlight. You dictate the color of your highlight with Color Set 1. Click the Color Sets tab. The color set includes four colors. Typically, these are set to the same color with various degrees of opacity. I'll change mine from the default yellow to an orange. Keep in mind that with only four color levels to work with, you won't get a full color highlight for your buttons, but you can still get very creative within the four level limitation. Here's a piece of clip art from Bing Images that I'll use for my button highlights. Back on the Highlight tab, point the Mask property to the image you want to use. Experiment with the Mask Mapping property and choose the one that gives you the results you want. I'll set mine to Intensity for this image. Preview your project and notice that the custom highlight creates a ghosted highlight over the image portion of the button. One trick I like to use is to set my button style to text and image, but then remove all button artwork files so that the image portion is invisible. Then apply the custom highlight artwork. Now when the button is not selected, the viewer sees just text, but with the button selected, the highlight image appears. I'll add another button to my menu, preview my project, and switch back and forth between the two buttons so that you can see what I mean. Here's the same thing after I've gotten creative with my color set and assigned a 100% opaque color to the first three colors in the set. This kind of technique may not work for every piece of artwork you assign as your custom highlight art, but it points out that you can get creative with these highlights and come up with some interesting or unusual results. Hopefully, this video has given you knowledge that you can use to create engaging custom button artwork, as well as a few ideas on how to use these tools to create interesting and unusual menu buttons. With a little thought and creativity, you'll be able to turn ordinary menus into menus that get noticed and add to your viewer's experience.